She was evicted and doesn't know why, but there's something about her boyfriend she doesn't know. That he is also homeless? You know, it sounds like that could easily be the case, but why? So. I call my stepdaughter's entitled boyfriend Wreck-It Ralph. No relation to the trademark or anything, just coincidental naming. He has a tendency to break, ruin, and tear up everything that he touches. My stepdaughter, who is basically a sweet, enduring young woman who I love dearly, has, like many young women with self-esteem issues, allowed herself to be led astray by Wreck-It Ralph. I'm gonna wreck it! Wreck your relationship! Stop, Ralph! And your family! Ralph, what are you doing? Ralph, why have you turned to the alcohol once again. In the year they've been together, she lost everything, but at 23, she's old enough to have learned her lessons without us parents coming in to rescue her until she gets rid of Wreck-It Ralph and back on track with her life. When they first got together, they lived with her dad and myself for a few months. It very quickly became apparent that Wreck-It Ralph had a chip on his shoulder, and when it came to me, he would carry tales to my husband, causing us to argue. Despite my husband telling Wreck-It Ralph many times, that was my house and everything in it was mine, Wreck-It Ralph would keep asking my husband, not me, if he could have this or that, and that's if he asked at all. He kept getting more and more animals, despite us telling him no more. What kind of animals? Alligators, lepers, no, no, no. Neither of us were taking care of the ones he had. They weren't buying any dog or cat food or cat litter, so my husband and I were buying all of those. They weren't picking up any of the messes. They weren't training them at all and allowing them to tear up our belongings. Wreck-It Ralph sounds like the worst. He got a whole crew, a Wreck-It crew, to like do his bidding for him. Mary Jane, if you know what I'm saying, is legal in our state and there is a dispensary in our town and the only work these two do would be door-to-door -door delivery. Like they deliver weed door-to-door? -door? Like they're, are they drug dealers? Is that are they saying they're drug dealers, but like legal ones? Hi, Mrs. Johnson. We have a great new product we want to share with you today. This one's called Misty Haze. <laughs> We're raising money for our neighborhood stepmother so that way she won't charge us rent and kick us out. It's like Girl Scout cookies, but like pre-rolls. <laughs> but Girl Scout cookies. Her job that had a daily payout was just enough to get money for Wreck-It Ralph to make a purchase at the dispensary every day along with eating at fast food restaurants. God. Piece of shit. Wreck-It Ralph's chip on his shoulder when it came to me was such that they brought my husband a soda one night, walking in the back door right past me, calling out loudly, we got you a drink your favorite soda, to my husband in the living room with zero inclusion of me. Where's my favorite soda? This is my house. I want my favorite soda. Hey, sorry, this, stat this breathing statue is in my way, but we just got your favorite takeout tonight if you want anything. Another example is my stepdaughter asking if she could use my debit card to get the four of us drinks at a local convenience store on one hot day. My husband and I were unloading stuff from the truck in the trailer in the backyard, and that was no problem. However, when checking my account, they spent $20 on food for Wreck-It Ralph without asking. The end came when I told them that they had to replace the bedroom door that their dog chewed the bottom out of and refused to allow the pit bull mix they wanted to rescue, even though it had a bite history to enter my home. So they ended up moving to her mother's home at that point. So OP is the stepmom, the daughter. She just went to her bio mom's house. During their time there, my stepdaughter kept getting tickets in her car, which is only registered to my husband. <laughs> They weren't paying their insurance, which I had bought my stepdaughter her own policy and paid the startup out of with my money when they lived with us. And also they didn't pay the plate renewal. Now her license is getting suspended and it cost my husband and I $600 to get those plates. $600? again, in his name only, to get unsuspended. Dude, Wreck-It Ralph has a hefty bill. He's, he's racking up the charges. Even outside of the house. Yeah. Wow. I recently had to get one of those stickers, you know, like the re like the renewal stickers on my car. $400, dude. Yes. I was like four months late, so that's part of the reason why. But Don't let it expire. That's the key. Such a Wreck-It move, dude. Such a Wreck-It move. Plus, they had damaged the car and it needed repairs. My God. So so my husband took the car from them before her license was suspended. But after the police took the place from her car, my husband let her use his truck, which was on my insurance policy.
policy. Then Wreck-It Ralph drove that. He had no license and he blew the entire motor in the car. How how, how do you blow a motor? Dude. Is that his fault if you blow a motor? I don't know. It sounds like he didn't crash. I don't know much about cars, but if you're blowing motors, your car's probably fucked anyway. Maybe. Car people in the audience, how does one blow a motor without crashing? Let us know. Now that car is sitting and can't be used. I told my husband I would put the car on my insurance for him, but only if he drove it. If he returned it to them, I was canceling the insurance, which I've stood by. Nevertheless, Wreck-It Ralph called daily, demanding my husband return the car to them once it was legal and fixed. In what world could you demand anything? You are the biggest buffoon in the world, Wreck-It Ralph. What kind of pull do you have? What kind of pull? No pull. Wreck-It Ralph can only pull your daughter and that's it. Has no pull anywhere else. But that's the pull that matters. Tragically, that is the one pull that matters. Yeah, dude. Rough. After three weeks, my husband finally said, look, you dumbass. I don't know what it is you think you're trying to accomplish here, but you're not demanding anything from me. Facts. And you're not getting the car back. I may have originally bought it for her before she got with you, but it is my car in my name and I'm keeping it in lieu of the truck you ruined. Don't call me about the car again. Got it? Boom. Good job, daddy. We've been hearing of ongoing disputes between my husband's ex and Wreck-It Ralph. Things got so bad there that Wreck-It Ralph told my husband's ex-wife to pack up her stuff and get the F out of her own home. Another time, he told her to shut the F up and remember who she's talking to. What, Wreck-It Ralph said that? He said that to Opie's bio mom. Who, I genuinely, like, you know when people say, like, who do you think you are? Like, I actually genuinely want him to answer that question. Like, who do you think you are? If you were to describe yourself and your sense of authority, what would you come up with who the fuck are you president of the universe that everyone should bow down to duh do i actually there's this one guy that i knew in, or a friend of a friend in college that did a bunch of acid and then thought he was the second coming of christ and like got mad when people didn't think he was jesus and would throw plates at them Maybe this guy is just eternally just tripping like crazy. It is a somewhat prevalent occurrence on large doses of psychedelics to develop a God complex. So maybe he's developed a God complex. Now that is a moonshot theory there. I like it. I like it. Let's see. So we all decided it was time to let our daughter hit rock bottom since she wasn't seeing how Wreck-It Ralph had taken her from being a sweet, lovable, well-liked and responsible girl in a college nursing program to this person with a criminal history and no prospects at the moment. Is he hot? He's got to be hot. He's got to be a fucking smoke show. Yeah. Right? There is no way this girl is dating a guy with a criminal record that's rude to her family, that's a piece of like living human waste, not doing anything, smoking dope every day. Like there's no way. There's no way he's not hot, right? He has to be hot. Let there be one stupid reason. Like just like one redeemable reason, even though if it's a shallow reason just yeah. let it be high. anything don't be ugly my husband's ex-wife the girl's bio mom moved in with her boyfriend turning the power off at the home that she had been renting and she told her former landlord whom she was actually long-term friends with that she wouldn't allow it to affect their friendship if the landlord evicted her and wreck it ralph for squatting since neither were on her lease to begin with when my stepdaughter called wanting to come back my husband told her she could but wreck it ralph could not not. Mm, split them up. Split them up. Up, up. Yeah. Make Wreck-It Ralph single forever. Castrate him. Take his penis. Put him in the boys choir so he can sing those really high notes, you know? God dang. Now... They are staying at a homeless shelter in the town where Wreck-It Ralph's mom lives, and Wreck-It Ralph's mom won't let them live with her either. Bro, how do people fall in love with these people? I, I just truly... Dude, eight-inch cock. There it is. There it is. You know what? I'll give it. I'll give that one to Sam. I'll give it to him. Ha! I got you. But this has entitled Wreck-It Ralph that she really won't let go of him. And it's really brought her down and she can do so much better. This guy actually told us once that he couldn't work at a factory that he interviewed at because it was climate controlled and his heart won't allow that. Then he argued with me and my husband that climate controlled meant controlled by the climate. So it was hot in the summer and cold in the winter. Oh, so it was like uncomfortable, basically. Climate control 
controlled meant that there was no air conditioning and the inside was the same temperature as the outside. <laughs> Yes. He thought climate controlled meant there was no air conditioning. So he's pro air conditioning. He just didn't know what climate controlled means. The parents had to have him explain. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's evil and an idiot. Oh, we haven't seen him hold a job or do anything useful and productive since they've been together. Just demand from and use the people who love the girl that he has become clung to. And there's a comment that OP responded to. Commenter says nine out of ten. He He's abusing her in some form. Whatever you do, don't break contact with her. And OP responded to a comment. Commenter says, cameras are a method of collecting evidence and can maybe be used as a deterrent. Certainly doesn't mean that Wreck-It Ralph won't come over. In fact, I assume he doesn't care at all. OP said, I've dealt with that once before and it didn't work out very well for the other person. Yes, he literally broke my surveillance cameras, broke into my home, claimed to be a resident. I mean, you could sue him, but you could arrest him for that. Yeah, my God. Yeah, yeah. That is breaking and entering. True. He stole my belongings and threatened me and my spouse. When we contacted the police who said it was a civil matter, I informed the police in writing with photos of the damage that due to the threats to self, party, and home and property, it now fell into the realm of legally authorized self-defense. I went on to explain that I'm a black belt and trained marksman. True story on both accounts. I'll have you know, officer, I know karate. <laughs> I will chop my enemies in half. There was someone that was on our call in. I, I don't think it, it might have been with you or might have been on uh, a solo where they were like, yeah, I'm a black belt in like mixed martial arts or in, in Krav Maga or something. And so my hands are literally lethal weapons. And if I attack someone, I get charged with assault with a deadly weapon. Really? Is that like a thing? Is that true, Riley? Yeah, yeah. If you like are a black belt in like any shape or form, you have to register your hands as like weapons. That's fire. <laughs> I love that. Didn't realize that my hands are registered as lethal weapons. Oh, shoot. No. No. Uh oh. No. He said the myth. What? I thought this was real. Dang. All right. Been bamboozled. <laughs> Way to go, Riley, mis misinforming our legions of loyal, <laughs> loyal followers. I'm so sorry. Uh, and that since the police could not do anything, I was prepared to use whatever force was necessary. The very next day, warrants were issued for that person. Wreck It Ralph won't win on that front. On to the update. Well, we are making progress. My stepdaughter recently had court for the license and other car issues. They are staying just across the state line in a small city 30 miles east of us. So my husband and I devised a plan to get her a loan from him. We said the only car running was the two seat convertible and could only take her for the court appearance. My husband picked her up and then I took her to her court appearance as my husband had to be at the house for something. On the way, she started talking about how she wanted to break up with Wreck-It Ralph. Okay. Finally, 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 jeez. But she was afraid of the hurt that comes with it. She hated how controlling and untruthful he was, but felt he truly loved her and didn't know if the negative behavior was simply from the stressful circumstances. If he's acting like that and being a dick, then he doesn't love you in the way that you deserve. Riley, right, come on, let's give our boy a, let's give our boy a round of applause there. Wow. Have you been in party. love? Woo! <laughs> Tell him, baby. Have you? Have you? Have you freaking been in love? Wreck-It Ralph what hasn't? Wreck-It Ralph hasn't. He loves himself, dude. And being a freaking wanker. That's right. British slang, dog. She said that once he got SR22 insurance and his license back, that he would be able to work and things would be better. I pulled over, pulled out my phone, and went to the court file website for the county north of us where Record Ralph used to live. I pulled up six cases in his name, three to do with driving with multiple citations in each of them. The most recent, he was speeding, ran a stop sign, hit a woman, fled the scene, had a suspended license and registration, and had obviously no insurance. Oh my God, wreck it, Mr. Wreck it. That's insane. Stop wrecking. He can't, he can't help himself, dude. You know what he needs to do? He needs to be one of those like managers or like one of those guys at one of those demolition places where you get a bat and you like hit all the TVs. That's his calling. <laughs> yes, yes. He needs to be the, the like wrecking room instructor and show people how it's done. Wreck it Ralph was arrested later and had to post bond. The case he had was $4,000 in fines 
Plus, we had received a letter at our house from the state stating that he owed $11,000 in restitution to the woman that he hit for damages and that his license was permanently suspended until the restitution is paid. Any related court-imposed fines and state-imposed reinstatement fees was paid along with the proof of the SR-22 with 48 hours of release suspension by the state. My husband accidentally opened it. It arrived in the mail and he didn't look at the address. She was deflated and angry, stating that they had talked at length and he never told her any of that, only that he needed the SR-22 because he got caught driving without insurance and had to have it before he could get his license back. No surprise at all. At least he's predictable. Predictably a fucking train wreck, but predictable. Yes. As someone who used to have my own insurance sales license, I told her, no, you can't get insurance if your license is suspended or revoked, at least not in our state. He would have to get his license valid, then get his insurance mandated with the SR-22 reporting. She herself ended up on probation for her driving issues related to him with a six month suspension and $750 in fines. And that was a lucky break from the judge in all honesty. She too will have to get the SR-22 once her suspension is over. Afterwards, while I stopped at the store to get stuff for supper, Wreck-It Ralph kept calling and demanding that she come back. Despite plans to have supper with her that evening, she ultimately gave in to the relentless calls and asked her dad to take her back before I could cook. I did verify that yes, she does have an IUD to prevent pregnancies for those who were inquiring. She was very unhappy with her situation and beginning to see him for what he is and how in the year they've been together, he has just brought her down. However, she's not quite at the point of leaving him, but hopefully with any luck, she'll be calling to come home soon. She knows that she has a place here with us, but he does not. And OP responded to one final comment. Despite everything you told her, she still isn't at the leaving him point? Genuinely curious. What would he have to do for her to be at the leaving him point? That is a great question. OP, I don't know. The fact is she is considering it as a move in the right direction, and we are being supportive without giving any money or enabling the situation in any capacity. The fact that she now has a misdemeanor from driving as a result of his actions really weighed on her. I told her without mentioning it to him, it wasn't the end of the world, but that it was meant to be a learning point and she got to reflect upon how and why she had gotten into the situation as well as how to move forward from here. She was receptive. So there seems to be hope. There's light at the end of this tunnel that is quickly crashing down because Wreck-It Ralph is going into either side of that tunnel, exploding his car and having the rubble of the tunnel collapse. And then the structural integrity is gone. You have to have like an architect come in and like survey. It's like, hey, you know, this needs like reinforced steel beam. Yeah, it's a shit show. I have to admit, like I am impressed. Like this, this man is a one man Marvel movie, you know, where they just uh, destroy the town into smithereens like every time. I'm like, he is that guy. Except instead of like the Marvel movie being like, the heroes save the day and they don't like just talk about the hundred thousand people that just died and the trillions of dollars of damage that were done. We are actually seeing and talking about all the damage that is done in this Marvel movie. I actually want to see a Marvel movie where it just focuses on the dude that is just like, my sword's done. The guy, if you ever saw it, was kind of about that, which was a decent movie. But I, yeah, truly a movie about the, the bystander who just has his office destroyed and like I desperately want to see that These too. freaking stupid arrows trying to save the day but I just want to sell my pies. Okay, speaking of destroying I have one question for everyone watching and for you Sam. Do you think that OP should continue to basically keep her daughter cut off while she is still with Wreck-It Ralph? Uh, no, I mean like... <laughs> I mean, you should still be supportive in some way, maybe not financially, but because you don't want to enable her making this bad decision consistently. Or you also don't want her to feel like she's completely isolated. So like if something bad does happen, like she can still come to you. Come back, right? Yeah. So it's dude, it's like, it's tough. It's tough. And they've done so much though, too. You know? Yeah, they've done a lot. I'm actually curious if anyone watching has their own story of a Wreck-It Ralph that's wrecked like their... Yeah, who is your worst Wreck-It Ralph significant other? Put it in the comments. I think we have a place for them to send those stories to as well, Sam. Oh, yeah. If you want to call us, call us at 440-508-6567 and we might read it on the show. We actually have just released our first uh, voicemail call and uh, uh, as of recording this and, and people kind of are, are loving it so far. 
far. So we're probably going to do more. Could be you. Could be you. And with that, we'll get into the next story. I'm homeless because of what a customer did. What would a uh, customer service representative have to do for you to want them to experience homelessness? Put your answers in the comments. So this happened a couple of years ago, pre-pandemic. I owned a comic book and game store in a metropolitan area, and I've been there for several years. Sounds like the beginning of a nerdy rom-com. He's just a boy who owns a comic book store. She never went in. <laughs> <laughs> because she's not a dork like you. Yeah. As with any place of business, you get your regulars. I had two employees that worked for me, one of which was a young lady that had worked with one of my regular customers from the area. Now, this regular customer, we'll call him Mr. Mmm. It's just M, Mr. M. Mr. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Mr. Typically came in on the weekends when I wasn't there. But every once in a while, he'd come in during the week and talk with me about miniatures or comics or whatever tabletop game was coming out. He didn't make an impression on me one way or the other. I might as well have been talking to one of my action figures. <laughs> yeah. No, I would rather talk to my action figures. I love yeah. them. I, I don't yeah, care bro. about you, you bread with legs. <laughs> then one day, one crazy day, he stopped coming in. My female employee. Boy, we'll call her Miss F, told me that Mr. M was hurt really bad at work and he had asked her to make his purchases while he was in the hospital and I didn't think much about it. Fast forward to about six months later, Mr. M comes into the store and he's in a wheelchair. His girlfriend is with him. We'll call her Miss G. Now, full transparency, I had a huge crush on Miss G. I would gush like an idiot around her and spend way too much time explaining some inane thing she'd ask about just to be talking her up. She's probably one of the most intelligent women I've ever met. Funny and beautiful to boot. Man is just like shamelessly rising up this dude's wife. And a regular customer too. Have you no loyalty to the milk toast customers? Mr. M had to have noticed, but he never said anything anything about it. And after he was in a wheelchair, I spent a little more time talking to him, which is good. At least he wasn't like, yeah, I'm only going to talk to the wife even more. Oh, sorry, buddy. Conversations happening up here. Can you hear down there? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> he would be a monster. A monster. Who does this to your regular customers? There's a bond. It turns out he was a really cool guy, led an amazing life and was well liked by other customers that came into my store, which I had never noticed because I was busy flirting with his wife. <laughs> After his injury, I noticed him coming in more frequently since he wasn't able to work. He was always with his girlfriend because he could no longer drive himself, and we sort of became friends. I went to visit him at his home a couple of times. It was a modest place, but you could tell everything in it was high quality. He had a gaming room and a video game arcade in part of the house. One day, while I was there, my employee, Miss F, showed up at his house, came in with her own key, and went into his room and came out wearing different clothes. It threw me off. So I asked what the deal was and found out that Mr. M was dating his girlfriend, Miss G, and my employee at the same time. And... They were open to it. Whoa. Dude. Damn. Mr. Mm really got that. Mm -hmm. I tentatively broached the subject with Miss G and she not only confirmed, but even told me they were trying to find a way to make it official between the three of them. So tr they're trying to get do a, 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 a thruple marriage. That's when the jealousy kicked in. Mr. M was a nice guy and he wasn't ugly or anything, but I just couldn't for the life of me figure out how this guy, even before he was in a wheelchair could land two of the most beautiful and intelligent women I had ever met at the same time. And they wanted to be sister wives with the guy. What's his secret? What is it? Ask him. That's what yeah, I was ask like. Ask him the secret, dude. Yeah. Just, yeah. I kept it to myself, of course, and life carried on like this for about 18 months. Then the F up happened. I was having a pretty shitty week at the store. One employee had quit without notice and Miss F had taken time off in advance to focus on school. I had some temp help, but this guy was an idiot and could do little more than bag comics and put things on shelves. During this time, I had quite a few customers try to haggle me down in price on my merchandise. I don't know what was going on, but it seemed like every other customer wanted some kind of discount. 
<laughs> Wait, <laughs> is Mr. Mm, like, I've taken all your women. Now I'm going to open a competitor and take all your customers, too. Yeah, he opens up a competitor right across the street. <laughs> no. Oh. Then Mr. Mm came in. He had ordered some new stuff for a game he played. While he was ordering them, he and I were talking and he asked, since I'm buying so many of these, is there any chance I could get a better price on them? Even Mr. Mm asking for the better price. Full disclosure, he had ordered 10 cases of stuff. I was charging him full retail plus my markup. There was plenty of wiggle room for me to give him a discount of some kind. I could have given him 40% off and still walked away with a profit. Also, it should be noted, if he hadn't been ordering these 10 cases, I would never had the stock in my store to begin with. It was basically free money. Instead of giving him a discount, I yelled at him in front of about half a dozen other customers. You're a f- asshole. What is it with you people and your discounts? Do you think I'm running a charity here? I have to make money to pay the bills here. OP. OP, that seems like a slight overreaction. Oh, this is not good. Buddy, my dad actually does this at like most places he goes to. He's just like, oh yeah, he'll, he'll get a coffee at Earth Cafe. He's like, oh, like, can I use the discount? And sometimes there's like, oh yeah, no, sir, there's no discount for this coffee. Then like 30% of the time, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, we can, we can apply the 15% discount. I got to do that. Yeah, dude. You can just ask for things for cheaper. Your dad is just, is, he's just the man. He's just the man. And it went on like this for about five minutes of him just sitting there in his wheelchair looking up at me while I piled on every complaint about shitty customers that came to mind. Five minutes? You're fumbling your own bag. You're an asshole, dude. I don't know what came over me, but I felt like I had some small measure of power over this guy and my jealousy wouldn't let me abate my temper. After I took a breath and stepped back, that's when I knew I fucked up. Everyone was staring at me. One person had their phone out recording. Miss F had walked in at some point and watch this tirade unfolding. Every time Miss G had tried to wheel Mr. M away, he would just gently put his hand on hers and stop her. He didn't say a word the whole time I was losing my shit. Not a single word. Then, as if nothing had happened, he said, okay, my man, my bad for asking. I didn't know you felt strongly about it. Here, let me pay for my order and give me a call when the stuff comes in. For the crowd, for the phone recording, for everything, that was the worst thing he could have said, right? What, you mean Miss M- uh, Mr. M? Uh, yeah, Mr. M, because now it's like, all right, you're going to be a, a tirading dictator a-hole about your stupid little games. So now, like, that, if that phone recording gets out around town... Oh, he's fracked. <laughs> game over, literally. He's wrecked, dude. I wonder if it's gone viral. Like, I wonder if this is like legit. Let's see. Let's see. I was completely flummoxed by his reaction, but I finished the transaction and he paid my asking price and he left with Miss G. Miss F followed him out as he was leaving and she came back in a few minutes to buy a couple of things for herself. She acted like nothing happened and I tried to give her a feeble apology and she said, don't worry about it. He's not going to, so you shouldn't. That was the last time I saw Mr. M in person. His order came in about five days later. Miss G and Miss F came in to pick up his order. And about a week after that, Miss F told me she wasn't coming back after her scheduled time off. I noticed a couple of weeks later that for the first time in years, I had a downward trend in profit for the month. The following month, it was worse. Typically, I would order certain games or comics because they were in high demand and I'd have to reorder them twice a month. This time, the stuff I had ordered at the beginning of the month was still sitting on the shelf. Since I was spending more time at the store, I started to notice that some of my regular Regulars were becoming irregulars, and I got a chance to have my accountant walk me through the books. That's when I noticed it. Throughout the month, there would be cash purchases ranging about $300 to $500 three times a week, usually on Tuesdays, which I didn't work on, and on Saturdays and Sundays, which I also didn't work on. So I reached out to Miss F and asked her about it, since it looked like these were usually the times when she worked. I started asking about the transactions, and she quickly said, oh yeah, that was Mr. M. He spent $1,200 to $1,500 a week there by himself, basically every week since I started, which was like since you opened the store, right? Whoa. He's literally been like the most loyal customer ever. $1,500 a week at this store. On like games and comics and... Whoa. Whoa. And OP just completely boofed it. Oh my God. 
I could literally feel my heart hit my stomach on the way to my knees. I asked Miss F if she ever used her employee discount. She promptly said no, but that the money she typically did spend there, $80 to $100 a week, was usually given to her by Mr. M. But wait, it gets worse. The third month after the incident, one of my regulars comes in who hadn't been there for a while. I started talking with him and asked if he knows where everyone had gone. My regular MTG group had dwindled down to about four guys coming in when up to this point, it had been a group of at least 50. My miniatures players hadn't been in to play in almost five weeks and the pull boxes were about to be cleaned out because more than two thirds of my regular comic subscribers just stopped showing up. That's when he tells me, yeah, about that. You know, Mr. M, right? Someone shared the video of you berating him on our Facebook group and comic book store owner that isn't you offered him a 15% discount for life. Since Mr. M started going there, they set up miniature tables and started hosting card and board games. Everyone is going there now. I barely paid rent that month. The following month, I didn't make rent. And the month after that was official, I had to close up shop. Two months after that, I literally moved back in with my parents. I went over the books as far back as I could. And in the course of my previous five years, it looked like Mr. M had spent over $325,000 at my shop by himself. He never was flashy or flaunted his wealth or anything, but he certainly spent more than enough to cover my lease and utilities. I bring all this up because yesterday I ran into Mr. M at the local taco joint. He was walking around and you'd never be able to tell he had been in a wheelchair. Miss G was with him. It's Mrs. G now. She's still gorgeous and charming. They were out picking up carvings for a Miss F. Maybe Mrs. F too. Since she was at home pregnant with her and Mr. M's second child. We talked a bit about the pandemic, how some local businesses were hit hard. I brought up that I heard that one of the local shops survived the pandemic because because they got bankrolled by a customer that didn't want them to see them close due to the hardships. Miss G gave a giggle at that and Mr. M tapped the side of his nose and winked at me, Santa Claus style. I died inside. Then I got to watch them drive away in a brand new 2021 Bronco first edition while I'm still driving the car I did last time I saw Mr. M. After they left, I sat there in my car thinking about this colossal F up. I swear I was cry eating my tacos. And there is a thick, juicy update on this story, but fuck. You could have apologized. You could have apologized. Oh, also, P.S. I still live with my parents because once my boss found out that it was me that treated Mr. M so badly, he fired me. Dog. <laughs> oh. So this was after he closed his own shop. He got a different job and couldn't keep it because of how he treated Mr. M. Wow. That's crazy. All right. Let's get into this update. So I've also learned that my parents are enablers, at least my mother is, and that I should consider distancing myself from her as soon as possible as she is partly responsible for the abuse at the hands of her social group. So we're working on that. My father did not throw me out after seeing my last posts, but when he reads this, he probably will. Who knows? Lastly, the apology. I reached out to Mrs. F on the premise that I wanted to congratulate her on her expectancy. And during the course of that, I explained I would like to meet with the three of them in the near future future to apologize in person. She agreed and said that would be nice and told me that the three of them would actually be not far from my house the next day. And if I wanted, we could be for lunch. I almost chickened out at the last minute, but I went. They were together sitting outside when I arrived. Miss F was definitely pregnant and Mr. M was seated between the two of them. So I sat opposite to him. What a G. It just sounds like he's like a great guy. Like he's rich and he's also like really nice. Yeah. I feel tempered. He just sounds like a good dude. I led with, look, I know it's been a long time, but I feel like I really owe you apology for the way I acted a few years back in my shop. So I'm sorry for that. Also, I'm sorry it took me this long to apologize. Mr. M said, Oh, I don't care about any of that. It was never a big deal to me. Apology accepted. <laughs> that all this is worse. Oh, he saw the confusion on my face when he said he didn't care about any of that and continued with, we moved two weeks after that. Didn't Miss F tell you when she gave you the notice? It was just too far to drive all the time. Since you never texted or called, we assumed you didn't really miss us. I asked where they were living now generally. And sure enough, the shop he started going to is about seven miles closer to his house than mine would have been. And in 
and city miles, that's basically across the country. Plus, I just found out I was prego, so I decided I needed to find work closer to home. Miss F chimed in. So here I am, having twisted myself up about all of this and everything, and to these people, it was nothing of consequence. We finished up lunch together. They told me about the things they're doing and seem to be doing really well with life. So good for them. I somehow feel worse after the fact. Just goes to show, right? That's the update. Have fun ripping me apart. Oh, that update kind of sucks, dude. That's rough. It just, it made him feel worse. It's like, oh shit. They didn't even care to begin with. I'm a little bit, my conspiracy theory on this story is that Mr. M did really care. And, you know, maybe that's a convenient excuse. And is twisting the knife. He actually cared so much that he moved. Playing like a million D chess. I don't think so. Man already has two wives. He doesn't need anything else. That's true. He doesn't need to care about this freaking loser. And, like, he lost all this stuff. This pawn scum. But man, I mean, what would you do if like you were a regular customer at a place and some dude chewed you out? like this like i would probably never go again for sure 100 percent, and i would be like dude screw you yeah screw you who are you and also if i knew how much i had been going there and how much i had been paying oh man i would be like bro do you know who you're talking to you don't but with that i think this is a riggedy wrap also if you have a story that you want to share with us call us at 440-508-6567 we'd love to hear your stories we're gonna do more call-in episodes with you guys so um uh, looking out for those and we'll see ya in the next one. Love you. <laughs>